guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about a project that I've been working on out here on the ranch. I am not an electrician, but um, when you have a farm or a property, a lot of times you have to kind of learn how to do some of these things on your own. Um, so if any of you have any suggestions of what you think I could be doing better, feel free to comment and leave a message. Just you know, keep in mind that I'm not an electrician, I am just uh, learning as I go. Um, so what I have here is we uh, this piece of conduit coming out of the ground. When I dug the lines here to go to our well house, to our house, which are it's about 150, 180 feet or so to the house, we buried a uh, power line from the house to the well with those water lines to power the well. Uh, that's a 240, so it's actually um, got a hot, two hots and a neutral. Uh, for the well pump. We also buried a 30 amp uh, circuit that came out here for a while. We had a plug out here that was for the camper to plug into because when we were able to put power onto the house, we shut down the temporary power pole at the same time. It was pretty seamless. The camper just plugged in right here um, because we had to keep that powered until it sold so that it wouldn't get mildewy on the inside. Um, so. With a 30 amp circuit, we had um, a 10-2 wire uh, run out here for that RV plug, which means that we have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Um, and with the camper gone, our initial thought was that we would use this and we'd, we'd, we'd put some sort of outbuilding here where I'm standing. We have since decided that this is a better spot for a round pen for our horses. So there's really no need to have this 30 amp wire popping up out of the ground right here. Um, as winter hit, if you watched our winter preparation video, you probably learned that we figured out that we needed trough defrosters, we needed uh, lights because it gets darker outside faster. So um, we decided to make use of this 30 amp circuit and we actually turned this single 30 amp circuit into two 20 amp circuits. The way that it works, uh, and I'll explain to you here in a second, I can run 20 amps on one of those circuits at one time, but if I tried to run 20 amps on both, it's obviously going to, to trip my 30 amp circuit. Circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to our kind of our mini sub panel outdoors here, show you how that is put together, and then explain kind of how we put it in with the GFCIs and the lights. And uh, this is all still temporary right now, so some of the the elements that you'll see in place are actually temporary. Uh, we needed to do something fairly quickly. Before we bury uh, these electrical lines, we will uh, make a few more modifications, so I'll probably do a follow-up video on that. <laughs> is a 60 amp outdoor breaker box. Um, when you're doing a project like this, the, you can get outdoor boxes that are just switch boxes. I would definitely suggest for, for what we're doing and, what, and, and if you're doing something similar to this, getting a fused box, which means that you actually have breakers out here that can trip. Now I have already uh, flipped the breaker that is running out here to this. Um, before I'm even going to loosen the screw and open this up because uh, even though I'm not planning on touching anything in here, you want to make sure that the, there's no power running to this when you're, when you're working on it. And a couple things that I'm going to do differently before I finalize this is I'm actually going to put a box down here um, because I, I, this was a single, uh, this had one hot coming in and I needed two hots for this box. So there's, it's kind of, uh, I basically split the wire and have two hots running into each of these breakers. I want to do that uh, in a separate box down here and then have the wires run up on a 10-3 on a and, and then split up top instead of having the 10-2 running in. So we have uh, two 20 amp breakers. 
I actually have a new breaker for this box that I'm going to be installing that has these two 20 amps tied together. And that is because as we've uh, run this from here, we were using some leftover uh, 10 three wire uh, that, that's running from here on out. So that's giving us our two hots and, and a single neutral. So if one of these trips, we actually want them to trip together because we're sharing a neutral between them. Up on top, this box did not come with a separate ground bar. So I took the ground bar out of our RV box and I installed it into this box because you want to have the ground uh, separated from the neutrals with this being a sub panel of a, of a main panel. But beyond that, that's, that's pretty much what I did was I, I split our 10-2 coming in and gave myself two hots to power each of these breakers. Again, this is a 30 amp circuit. I have two 20 amps in here. Everything that I have down line from here, with the exception of the, the 10 gauge wire, is rated for 20 amps. The plugs, the lights. So I don't want to allow more, I don't want to allow any of those circuits to pull more than 20 amps. Um, and because the wire that we have buried to the house is a 10 gauge, I don't want the entire circuit to ever pull more than 30 amps. It, it sounds a little weird that I didn't split this into two 15s, but I can still have to operate like a power tool out here that might be uh, causing me to trip a 15 amp breaker. Um, I'm, I know that these circuits can each handle 20 amps individually uh, or uh, 30 amps together. That's basically how I did this box. There's really nothing to it. You need to make sure when you're doing anything outside that you're using an outdoor panel. Um, that gives you a little extra protection from the weather. It's really necessary if you're just having anything sitting outside. actually see um, where we have one of our outlets put in. Um, obviously, once we bury these wires, these will be sleeved in conduit going down into the ground um, and, the, and the post will be set more secure. These aren't too secure at the moment. I had to, I hand dug these in. We're actually going to have a fence going along here where I've set some of these receptacles and they will be on the, the fence itself. But um, it's important to use an in-use uh, all weather box when you're um, doing any type of outdoor electrical. Uh, they used to have a lot of those uh, outdoor boxes with just the metal uh, fl flaps that would open up and you can stick something in. Um, since then code has required these in-use boxes and it's really just a much safer solution. You can see that this electrical cord, um, we, we should be able to close this lid with that electrical cord still hanging out so we could leave the electric cord in if we if we needed to um, but the, the the big issue that i've run into is that we do have the 10 gauge wire that we were recycling and i wanted to keep the 10 gauge wire because we this is such a far run from the house um, it's allowing us to keep the amperage up it's not at this point going to get over 20 amps coming to this outlet um, so if anything, we've got an underused wire. And before I bury this, I may actually go back and replace the, these, uh, the, the 10-3 with a 12-3 just to make it a little easier to work with. But um, if I can't, I'll probably at a minimum come under here, add another box, and then just have a wire coming up to this GFCI outlet. All of my outlets are individually um, protected by GFCI, so I'm not running off of the load. And uh, part of the reason for that is because I'm running two circuits and I have a single neutral. So there's really not a way that I can um, run a load off of this outlet without having to uh, utilize the neutral that I'm also using on, uh, on a separate kind of 20 amp circuit. So 
uh, each receptacle in my scenario really has to be uh, individually wired to be GFCI and, and not carry a load. And because it's outside, I would prefer that anyway. <laughs> light switch um, they make these great uh, boxes that are um, uh, they're waterproof and weatherproof they're they're metal this switch right here is basically just flipping a regular light switch that is inside the box and uh, this powers the light on our paddock very simple to install again probably the, the biggest problem that I've had with this is working with these 10 gauge wires that we use because we had and so I may just to make sure that this stuff uh, stays together and I'm not trying to you know, force wires into components that they're not made to fit in. I'll probably, uh, this is another reason for trying to drop it down to a 12.3 from the 10.3 that I'm currently using. Here we basically have our, our light, which is operated off of a switch that we have back towards the house. Right now we're probably closer to 250 feet away from the house. So the switch is about a third of the way back to the house, so it could be turned on as we walk out to where the horses are. And then down behind me, uh, we currently have the last outlet in line, which is, again, its own GFCI. This one, the, the outlet behind me is actually that second 20 amp circuit. So the, the first outlet I have and this light operate off of one circuit, the outlet that's actually on the fence back here operates on its own circuit. And that's because the trough heaters can consume 15 amps of energy on their own. So that was another reason for running that one separately. Um, but I know exactly which ones are on which circuit I may label those. Uh, this probably will be more of a temporary solution or this might just be the end of our circuit. Uh, we could add some more lights to it, but as we eventually rebuild our barn, that will have its own power running to it. And once the, the barn has power, we could add additional outdoor electrical resources, such as um, some outlets further out into the paddocks uh, because they really should be on another uh, circuit since they're going to be pulling 15 amps at one time as well. So that's basically what we've been working on here. It's kind of a small project. We've got to bury these uh, power lines. We need to, uh, you know, do a little more work on the wiring. I think I'm going to go ahead and step it down to a 12.3 from the 10.3. Uh, the 10.3 was again something that I just had on hand. Uh, it's a, a good 
outdoor wire to have on hand when you're out on a farm or a ranch, especially if you need to run something off of a generator. But uh, it's it's not very practical uh, when you're wiring little lights and outlets and switches. Um, but it is a practical wire that's to run from the, the 30 amp breaker at the house 200 feet out to where that, that little sub panel is. If you do something like I did where I, I just used a 10-3 to run two circuits, it's important to remember that you tie your two circuit breakers together because that neutral could remain hot if one breaker trips but the other breaker remains active, which means that it's, it hasn't completely tripped the, the circuit. Um, Number two, if you're running GFCIs, you need to put the GFCIs independently in uh, from one another down the line. You can't uh, put in one and then run a bunch of uh, outlets off of the load. Um, again, I don't know if that's just a requirement anyway for outdoors, but in this particular situation, because of the shared neutral, the GFCI uh, wouldn't be able to operate the outlets off of the load correctly by having a split neutral and then I wouldn't be able to put in a GFCI further on down the line when the neutral wire is broken by another GFCI closer to the box. So um, those were kind of two things that I learned when, when putting this together and, and you're taking a single circuit splitting it into a multi-circuit with a single neutral. It can be done, it's just uh, you know a little finagling Again, if you have any comments of what I can do to improve on this short little system before we do our final work to it and put it under the ground, feel free to comment. Um, I'm not an electrician, but uh, these are like skills and, and, and things that you, you have to learn and develop if you're going to live on a large piece of land and, and maintain it and operate it and take care of your animals.